You are listening to The Political Periscope, a weekly podcast brought to you by Radio WNET. Interviews on international politics, security, geopolitics, economy and more, every Thursday at 7 p.m. Today's guest of The Political Periscope is Sebastian Tomasz Pucharski, a photographer, documentary filmmaker and volunteer. Political Periscope. For how long have you been helping people on the front lines, the civilians uh, in Ukraine? I I came to Ukraine in this another stage of the war. Uh, so that's mean what was at 25 of Feb February 2022. And then, you know, we fought the most of this war theater when we in Kiev, because that was uh, the first month of the war. So the Russian army trying to circulate uh, the area of the Kiev. And I spent there one month. And after this one month, I was trying to evacuate one of my hero called Vova, who is a 90 years old uh, guy who... Uh, who I met in my previous work, uh, because uh, in Donbass I am connected from 2015. Uh, I was researching this uh, area of Donbass war, Russian-Ukrainian war uh, from 2015. So I, I met Vova in 2015 and first task after this first month in Kyiv, when Kyiv, the area of the Kyiv, was liberated by Ukrainian army, was uh, to go to the Donbass to the place called Sivirodonetsk and and pull out uh, one of my heroes for my previous work. So I start to work as a evacuator from April 2022. Are there many people like you, many people who are actually risking their own lives to help others to evacuate civilians? So yes, there is a, there is a, absolutely right now there is a huge society of this kind of people right now. I am staying, I am based in Krematorsk, so there is a lot of organization, uh, a lot of also independent uh, volunteers from around the world. You know, um, I make a movie about this. The name is uh, the, the Kings of the Donbass, uh, which is a story about uh, volunteers, about people who we evacuate, uh, about the refugees. And in my in my story, I have so many um, volunteers from America, from Australia, from Canada, even from Russia. My main character, the hero of my documentary movie, is a Philip. Philip is a half Russian, half, half British. So he became very important part of my movie because I am also interested why he his motivation, why he came to Ukraine, because he's a Russian. So uh, why he wants to help Ukrainian people. So of course, there is a lot of Ukrainian as well. Uh, there is a lot of professional organization right now, especially after one year. After one year, I think a lot of Ukrainian figure out how to open some foundation problem is of course with the money so they raise the money in in germany for example in poland in united states of america so they have found from around the world even if they are ukrainian uh, so uh, so this is this is a characteristic of this group as of course is a many many of the people sometimes is even uh, sometimes it's the more people to want to be evacuated than people who wants to be evacuated <laughs> especially right now if we evacuate area of bakhmut and bakhmut right now uh, is a battle of the eight months so some people been evacuated before this stage right now what happens right now but for example today is a couple of volunteer still went to bakhmut to evacuate um, arrest people because uh, you know this is the, this is a key of this the people the civilian people the local people and they they decided to be evacuated on the last moment. So this is how it looks. You've mentioned Philip, uh, who's half Russian. So what's his motivation to be in Ukraine to help Ukrainians? Oh, it's very interesting. Yes, Philip, of course, is very interesting. And according my researching with him, according what I I was speaking with him, and uh, when I spent time with him, you know, Philip is from Russian opposition. So his mother is uh, Victoria Ileva. 
who is a World Press Photo Awarded Person winner from 1991 from some work. Uh, she's a photographer, journalist photographer, and she she makes some reportage about Chernobyl. And uh, she was uh, working with the Novia Gazeta, which is right now close in uh, in Russia. And I think he was he was living in this opposition uh, to to Russian politics, to Putin because of the mother. He also spent half a flight in Britain, in London, so he could experience some Europe, you know, and some culture of Europe. So I think for Philip, Philip is trying to trying to help because he, he feels like uh, this is a war, not only Ukrainian, but this is also his war. I believe if he's helping Ukrainian people as a uh, volunteer, this is kind of his fight with the Putin regime. So it's not only the fight for Ukraine, but it's uh, in general, it can be seen as a fight of values, of freedom, democracy against authoritarian regime of Putin. Do people in Donbass, the civilians that you evacuate, do they see this that way? Why do they oppose sometimes the evacuation yeah oh this is this is also a very interesting topic because you know this this tr in, st demographic structure of the donbass is very complicated so this region was um, grow up in 1940s because there is a lot of make oil a lot of resources this you know this resources things with the coil for example with salt so um so these people uh, the general demographic uh, of the of donbas uh, in 1950 was uh, a lot of russian people uh, who who been um, who been i think some transport here uh, without even the permission to work uh, with uh, with cold mails you know um, with uh, with some inf inf to building infrastructure here so um, this region was uh, the demographic of this region was the most of the Russian people uh, from Siberia, from this uh, east part of the Russian, where was no job. Uh, so they came here to work, and the demographic of Donbas became uh, more a Russian than than the rest part of Ukraine. Of course, in the age, in the next years, years and another ages, uh, more a lot of also Ukrainian um, settled this uh, this region of the Donbas, and at least Donbas became kind of a very interesting and very specific area of Ukraine, where the most people speaking uh, Russian. Uh, and the rest Ukrainian. At least they speak Surzhik. Surzhik is kind of mixed between um, uh, Russian and Ukraine. Uh, but when you ask the local people in Donbas who you are, what is your origin, how you can, you know, identify your uh, yourself, uh, they tell you, "I am Ukrainian." Um, yeah, I'm Ukrainian. I just speak Russian. Some people will tell you, like, "I am. I feel like I live in Ukraine." But I am. I feel like Russian because my mother, my father, been Russian. So it's very complicated. It's it's very complicated, and this is also why this war is happens because it's not so. This this demographic structure of these people is 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 very complicated. So also the problem is uh, with the Russian propaganda because if they speak Russian, they are connected with the Russian television, for example, which is in Donbas before the war was like eight television have been working here in uh, Donbass and only for Ukraine. So people, you know, stuck with this Russian television, uh, start to watching this Russian television. And even if they, they, they previously, they think they, yeah, I am Ukrainian, uh, then years by years, years by years, you know, because of this Russian uh, propaganda, they be, 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 became more pro-Russian people. So this is one point. There is, there is, of course, much, much more. Is like these people also are based in knowledge. This is this is very important because they 
Mm, they just finished the basic knowledge school, uh, like primary school, because of this, you know, Donbass is high industry uh, region. So these people be working um, a main like 90% uh, with some industry sector, like for example, coal mail and all of this logistic. So this kind of people also didn't travel like the special the old people they didn't travel more than 550 100 kilometers from their uh, their home um, and then at least they they haven't got this you know this knowledge this experience and uh, they they have some farms there they are just the farmers the most of them so they are just you know they are just worried about uh, worried about to be moved to other place because this is uh, a home of these people for for years years or uh, you know the decades uh, decades so uh, so this is everything what they have and they just want to be it's not means like these people are only waiting for a russian you know because these people at least is not so so many is of course there is like if I can, if I can try to exp express this with the percent, it's maybe like 35% of these people, yes. They waiting for the Russian because what I said, what I told you, this is because of the propaganda and because they are just feel the Russian. But the rest people just they worry about uh, about to left their, their home. So this is a very complicated, uh, complicated uh, situation here because of this, you know, of this Russian origins, you know, roots. And also these people are so basic, basic uh, knowledge, they have a basic knowledge. So, mm, so this is most the important uh, reason why they are, why they don't want to be evacuated and why they left this for the last moment, uh, because it's really last moment. We sometimes pull out the people from the, uh, from the house, which is already destroyed and they decided to be evacuated only because they haven't got any place to live. So this is how I can describe in general uh, Donbass. So there is a person who finally decides to get evacuated and they call you, they, I don't know, send a message to, to the army. How does it happen? So the procedure is, uh, is also very interesting because at least... Mm, uh, just maybe 20% people who are living there, they they asking about some request because there is many, many organization, of course, official organization who working with the evacuation, but at least the most of uh, people who evacuate, they are independent and and then adversing everywhere, like in internet, in Telegram, you know, here in Donbass working very nice uh, Telegram uh, channel or WhatsApp channel. So they, uh, there is a lot of adverts there. If you want to be evacuated for free, please call for, to this number. Also, I travel all the time with the volunteers and we have this adverts, we have these business cards and we put this everywhere on the shop. Procedure is looks like um, uh, we researching like in the front line is like 10 kilometers from this place where are we, we trying first to research this place. We trying first to speak with the administration, inform this administration that we are people who evacuate people and, um, and tell them uh, these phone numbers. And also we, uh, we give this adverse and we also put this adverse everywhere. So we preparing this for the moment when people will be thinking about the evacuation. But at least the most of the people, um, most of the people who who been evacuated, the request uh, was from the family, relatives from the Ukraine, from the central Ukraine or from the uh, West Ukraine, because, you know, in Donbas, at least during this eight years wars, because this is eight years right now, stay only the old people, only me middle age. The young people just emigrate, like move to Kiev, they move to other parties of uh, Ukraine. So here stay most of the old people and, and middle age people. Mm, so they have, sometimes they have, the most of them, they have some relatives in, uh, in central Ukraine or the West Ukraine. And we have this request for these people, like, 
for example, some some data of this uh, of these people who are living still in some areas of uh, of Donbas. Uh, they call to us uh, on message uh, by telegram and asking, please uh, evacuate my grandmother because she is there. She I haven't got contact by by the three months with with her. And uh, what is important, we all the time need to have a number, we need to have exactly coordinates, like address, uh, we need to know how old are this person is, and also um, how many people living there. And the most cases, we also need video, uh, like we asking uh, for the relatives needs to record video, and on this video, uh, this person need to explain uh, the relatives um, uh, very quickly that we uh, that we are evacuators and we came for a rescue we came for pull out these people and um, and the relatives waiting for them they have a home for them a shuttler for these people so this is very important because sometimes we are coming to pick up some pull out some person and this this person don't believe us that we are don't believe that we are came because of the request of their uh, uh, relatives and also they they haven't got you know internet for a couple of months uh, sometimes energy even um, electricity means so um, so it's it's so very important to have also this via video so a request we collect from all of the social media the most of the social media of course there is a government, like I told you, this official administration, which is also doing evacuation, but at least this, this evacuation is just maybe 20%, uh, because the official uh, evacuation working only in the huge in the big uh, city was official evacuation was in Severodonetsk, in Lysychansk, and at least in Bakhmut. Uh, but you know there is so many villages around here, so many the small cities, so uh, the small towns, and uh, and there was no uh, any official evacuation. Uh, so this is um, very important to um, to to have also these independent evacuators. How long are you going to stay there evacuating people? I've been interested with the evacuation process because I was trying, I was evacuate my, my one of my hero for my previous work, and in the same day when I when I was uh, trying to evacuate the Volva, my hero, I meet the war chaplain, the war chaplain Ivan and Sergey, mm, uh, they mm, they work with evacuation and evacuate people, so I start to follow them because I am documentalist and this is my work. I understood how is important this job. And I start to follow them, and then I experienced uh, as all of this society, all of these people who evacuate people. So I was starting to making a movie about them, and so far I'm working like this one year, and I don't know how long I will be here, but still is very important to do this job every day. Uh, because you know this this is complicated situation here on the Donbas. How how I said to you as well. I was just trying to to give you information how it looks like. So this is not like the war is right now one year and all of the people left these uh, you know critical areas. No, the people are still there. The people still believe that even here in Kramatorsk is right now I am in Kramatorsk this is 25 kilometers from from the line from the first line and right now in Kramatorsk people don't believe that war came here but at least it's looking like war also will be here so it's very important to to be here. It's very important to still make th this evacuation because how I was also tell, told you people left this decision for the last moment. They still believe everything will be okay. Uh, so it's a very important job. I don't know how long I need to be here to participate with this process, but uh, probably this, that will be to the last moment of the war. Thank you very much. Thank you. This was The Political Periscope. The podcast is released every Thursday at 7 p.m. 